And in this presentation, um, you have uh, mathematicians actually writing out their proofs for publication and students uh, deciding um, what to write in their answers, responses uh, in their exams, how to write those arguments. Um, however, um, if you think about the particular objectives uh, guiding students and mathematicians in each one of these three general activities, you may get different type of behavior. Uh, so it's interesting to look at uh, what those specific goals are and in the construction of mathematical arguments, you may think that somebody may be constructing the argument just given a problem situation and they just have to maybe argue their way to produce uh, conjectures or possible hypotheses about that problem situation. Uh, or you may be estimating the truth of a given conjecture and they're you know, creating arguments to support the, uh, that it's true or false. Uh, or to justify an ex an statement that that that, you're esti est that is estimated to be to be true. The same manner uh, in, in in reading argumentation, you may uh, read the argument solely with the purpose of comprehending it. So students reading a proof in a in a mathematics book with the with the main objective of comprehending it, or maybe you have uh, the goal of uh, comprehending it and evaluating that argument. Uh, Maybe uh, teachers um, uh, putting uh, a grade on that argument or mathematicians uh, deciding whether a submitted proof for publication is mathematically valid or not. And their behavior may change depending on what the goal is. And the same thing for, pre for, for presentation. Students may change their behavior if they're trying to convince another student that, that, that a given argument is, is, is true or whether they're just trying to demonstrate to, to their um, professors that they understand the proof in, a, in an exam. So that's a framework of, of, of different argumentative activities in undergraduate mathematics or university mathematics. And what I'm interested in is, 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 is studying students and mathematicians' behavior as they, as they perform those, those activities. So what does uh, that research look like? Well, um, uh, one way of looking at it is, if you think about it, uh, we have in one axis our activities. Um, in another axis, you have your level of expertise. You, so you want to understand how uh, both novice and experts behave in each one of, of, of those activities. And you may think of another axis uh, where you're thinking of um, individual differences, maybe different thinking styles of both experts and novices, and how that affects how they, how they perform each one of these, of, of these different activities. Now, um, Research in mathematics education has focused on the construction of, on, on novices construction of arguments. So that leaves um, a void. Here on the expert side, we have very little idea of, of, of there's very little uh, research on, on actual mathematical behavior, empirical evidence on that. And we have very little um, uh, uh, data on those two activities, uh, presentation and reading of arguments for both novices and experts. Uh, and although we have some hypotheses, we'll talk about a little bit about that afterwards uh, in terms of individual in di differences. This has been done in very small scale studies and, and um, there's, more, there's more work that needs to be done uh, about that. I'm going to simplify my previous research just with telling you a little bit about one study. Uh, this study was an argument evaluation, so uh, mathematicians and undergraduate students were giving a, a, a statement and an argument uh, that supported that statement. They were asked to what extent they were persuaded by, default, by, by that argument. Uh, and in particular, uh, in that experiment, I was interested in studying the effect of authority uh, on, the, on, on their evaluation of three different types of, of, of arguments, of mathematical arguments, a deductive one, a heuristic one, and a visual one. So let me give you an example of, this was the visual argument. Uh, so there was a given uh, a theorem, the fixed point theorem, a given argument to support that theorem. This, was, was, this, this one was visual. Um, and half of the participants uh, were to evaluate the, uh, the visual argument without the author, who, no, without knowing who, who the author of that, of that argument was. And the other half uh, knew or were told that, that the author of the argument was a famous uh, mathematician, Professor Littlewood, a uh, British mathematician. The idea is would they answer the, 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 the question differently? Um, and this is the some findings. Uh, this is the mathematicians. Um, it's very interesting stuff here. Uh, first of all, 
there is an effect for the heuristic and the visual arguments. So uh, what you're seeing there is level of persuasion on the vertical axis and, and condition anonymous or named in the, in the horizontal one. And so for the uh, heuristic and visual arguments, there was a difference. That means that mathematicians rated high, higher uh, the, the argument that contained the name of, the, of, the, of, of Professor Littlewood. Uh, but there was no difference for, for the proof by induction. So just with that data, there's, a, there's, there's um, uh, some interesting questions about why for some type of arguments, yes, and not for others. Uh, furthermore, um, students, undergraduate students, um, had you know, displayed similar, similar behavior for the heuristic and the induction argument, but not for the, for the visual one. So uh, here we have uh, a kind of anti-intuitive uh, story where mathematicians are affected by authority, uh, but not students. Uh, again, some very, very interesting behavior that, that, that needed to be explained. Current research. Um, so that was just, just one little example of, 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 of experiment on, on, on argument evaluation. Now, current research that I'm working on, uh, some of it is in argument comprehension. Um, currently working with some colleagues here at Rutgers, uh, uh, developing a, a model for, for reading comprehension, trying to answer the question of what does it mean to understand a mathematical proof? Uh, what kind of different things do you need to understand? What different aspects and how can you measure those? Uh, and that leads to a, um, a, the, the development of instruments to measure readers' understanding or comprehension of those proofs. Um, and the idea of, of, of reading how they, the level at which they are understanding different aspects of, that, of, of those arguments, mathematical arguments. So that's, that's one, that's one uh, uh, kind of project that I'm involved in working right now. And the other one is an argument uh, construction, and it's testing this hypothesis that I was telling you about a little bit earlier, um, that there may be uh, a um, uh, differences in how students approach a, uh, an argument construction task depending on their own uh, thinking style. So it may be there's some evidence from small scale studies showing that some, a group of students has this tendency to um, um, produce arguments in a, uh, proofs in mathematics in, in one way, and there's, well, there's another group that they have, has a tendency to, of, of producing it in another way. Now, again, this has been um, um, only research in very small scale studies, and we're actually, uh, I'm actually involved in writing a, a grant to answer that, that question um, with a larger scale study. So fingers, fingers crossed on that. Future research, um, uh, argument presentation. Uh, uh, so that last bit, that, that one type of activity that I hadn't been talking about uh, until now, I, I want to get to that. Uh, one question is how uh, do students and, and university professors present, uh, um, vary their, their behavior when they're presenting arguments depending on different, different um, uh, goals that, that, that are guiding their, their, their presentation. Um, so if the, a professor, think about a mathematics professor that has a particular type of group and they, he makes some decisions about presenting that, 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 that proof for that particular audience and maybe makes, uh, changes the argument when he's presenting it to another type of audience, we want to understand what, what those, what those uh, why are they doing those changes, what, are they, what is the rationale for doing those. The same for students. Uh, some prevent, pre presenting a, an argument to convince a friend, maybe another, co another, another student in the course, and how they present that compared to how they, they, they present it to, their, to their professors. Um, and another question, uh, which is very, one of the big pedagogical implications of this, of this work, is uh, having under, understood a little bit more better how, what, what it means to comprehend a, a, a given mathematical proof, we want to, uh, uh, to see which types of presentations from, from professors uh, maximize that comprehension from students, modulo their particular thinking style or, or um, comprehension style. That's, that's it. Thank you very much. Yes and no. So what I mean by that is that uh, there are people, there's, there was 
uh, there's a piece, a group of, of researchers in the, in the literature that claim that this shouldn't happen and others that say that do. Uh, so essentially it was just waiting for somebody to go and do ex experimental design to test whether it happened or not. Um, I mean, there's sort of a long tradition, uh, tradition in, in studying peer-reviewed journals in different fields, not just in mathematics yeah. or mathematics education, that shows the same article, the same submission, you change the authors, you get reviewers responding differently to it in situations where there aren't blind reviews. So that's fairly well known. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this research obviously is, is tied to that. And, right, yeah. and the idea that in mathematics, um, mathematicians would judge an argument by itself and not yeah. by any external evidence. And it doesn't seem to be that way, for some types of arguments, at least. OK, thank you very much. Thanks. Let's get the